Last night, I went to see the uh, spring musical at Bishop Gorman High School, A Fiddler on the Roof. That's an excellent play. If you want to see it, it's this week and all next weekend as well. But one of the uh, lines that uh, Tavia says is, uh, someone says, you know, remember, they were mad at the Russians were overtaking the village of Anatevka. And someone said, you know, we should get even with them, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, yeah. quoting today's gospel. <laughs> yes. And uh, Tevi comes back and says, if we did that, the whole world would be blind and toothless. <laughs> so anyway, Tevi had a good sense of humor. So these two laws, the first law is called the law of Talon, T-A-L-O-N. We get the word retaliate from that. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. So it's meant to be a law of justice. If someone hurts you, you can hurt them back. You know, if someone blacks your eye, give them a black eye. And that might seem right in some cases. In fact, sometimes, uh, especially maybe boys and maybe girls too, whatever, when you're growing up, you know, don't let anyone bully you, beat them up, you know, stand up for yourself, don't, you know, hit them back, you know, get even, etc. You know, people brag, I don't get mad, I get even. So retaliation is part of human culture, but it's wrong. We should never do evil to another person, even if they do evil to us. Jesus gives a few examples. Someone hits you on one cheek, turn the other as well. Someone wants to take you to law and you know, sue you for your coat, give them your overcoat as well. Someone says, you can work for me for a mile, say, I'll go two miles. Never return evil for evil as much as we want to do that. We, you know, we want to get even. Now, I'm not saying be a floor mat, let people walk all over you and abuse you and so on. But returning evil, evil never solves problems. It often can escalate into a huge fight, which started as just a little, you know, misunderstanding. You know, people yelling at each other and doing each other, etc. Very difficult. The other one was, uh, love your neighbor. And I said, well, sure, I love my neighbor. And then the law, according to Jewish people, said, hate your enemies. And again, we say, yeah, well, there's people I don't like, and so I hate them. Hate. We should never hate anyone. You know, we may disagree with someone. There may be people in our lives that's like oil and water, and we don't mix with them well. The kindest thing we can do is just let them alone. Have a nice distance between them. Never express hatred for others. And Jesus goes on to say, you know, God is good, and he lets the rain fall, and good and bad. He lets the sun rise, and good and bad. And if you love people, love you. Big deal. Everybody loves the people, love them. How about reaching out and loving the people that you don't like? And, and that can be difficult. At least, she says, at least pray for them. Pray for your persecutors. Maybe I can't shake hands and be best friends with them, but can I pray that they are well, they are happy, that their marriage is going along well, that they make good money, that they have a nice vacation, whatever? I would hope so. Even if you are polar opposites, do we have to do that? Now, when I was a kid growing up here in Las Vegas, we had two school holidays every February. February 12th and February 22nd. Does anyone know what February 12th is? Lincoln's birthday, February 22nd. Washington's birthday. We had those two days off. Now it was all combined to President's Day, which is Monday this week. But I wanted to use these two presidents to show how they lived out the teaching of today's gospel. It's kind of a President's Day homily, if you will. An Irish politician, Edward Newham, wrote on December 22nd, 1791, to George Washington, in which he lamented on the conflicts between Catholics and Protestants in this country. Washington hoped that the enlightened and liberal policy, which has marked the present age, would at least have reconciled Christians of every denomination, so far that we should never again see their religious disputes carried to such a pitch as to danger the peace of society. He writes, of all the an animosities which have existed among mankind, those which are caused by a difference of sentiments in religion appear to be most inveterate and distressing and ought most to be deprecated. I think we've come a long way, but I grew up here in Las Vegas thinking that Protestants were bad people. I've told you this before, that I was taught if I was walking down the street and there was a Protestant church, I had to cross the street so I didn't walk in front of that Protestant church building. What's that teach a little eight-year-old kid? 
There must be something evil in that building. I got to make sure I don't get near it. You know, that's bad. So Washington, a couple hundred years ago, was saying, we have started a country for freedom of religion and to hate people because of their religion is simply wrong. And so whether we think of people who are Jewish or Buddhist or Muslim or atheist or Protestant or Orthodox, whatever, we cannot have hatred for them in words or actions. Listen to our president, Mr. Washington. Lincoln wasn't a saint, but someone who loved the Bible. He memorized large sections, including the entire Sermon on the Mount. He memorized this part. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The very quote we had today. Who were Lincoln's enemies? Well, he had lots of them, especially people who defended slavery. He wrote, I am naturally anti-slavery. If slavery is not wrong, nothing is wrong. I cannot remember would I not so think this way and feel the same way. Lincoln hated slavery, but he avoided hating defenders of slavery. Not easy to do, to hate a person's ideas, but to love the person. In his second inaugural address, Abraham Lincoln wrote, both read the same Bible, north and south. Both pray to the same God, and each invokes God's aid against the other. It may seem strange that any man should dare to ask God's assistance in wringing their bread from the sweat of, slave, of slaves. But let us not judge, lest we be judged. So again, an example of hating slavery, but not hating those who propose slavery, those uh, who are in the South, if you will. So two good lessons from two great presidents. But let's go back to the Bible. Do not be vengeful. Do not get even. Do not brag about getting even. Love everyone. Do not repeat evil for evil. Love your enemy. You can't be best friends. You maybe can't, uh, you know, spend time together, quality time together. But you don't have to hate each other. Perhaps as we start Lent in just a few days, you can think about some of the relationships that are kind of uh, sour or tarnished or broken. Can you repair those relationships? Hope so. But at least never again express hate or vengeance toward another human being. That's the message directly from Jesus.